Good morning, Arise Church. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having us this morning and on Father's Day. Wow, what a privilege. And uh, hi to Al. Um, time to go out of your pajamas. Got those hot boots off the feet. You can just see it right now. Um, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers, all of the men, sorry, all of the men. Because, you know, we as men carry the Father the heart of God. The women do too, but today it's about the men. The men carrying the Father heart of God, and um, you know we have an incredible privilege to to call forth the young men and women that are on the journey with us. When I originally wrote this, I had you know the ones coming behind us, but they're not. They're with us. We're all in it together, um, and so as men, we've got a great privilege. My message this morning actually isn't so much particularly about Father's Day. Um, but it is a call for all of us to share our lives powerfully and prophetically uh, with others, to call them forth. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about there in a moment as I get into my message. But men, you have the opportunity to encourage and, you know, to sow into the lives of the next generation. And, um, you know, I hope you realise what a powerful, life-changing influence you can be. I want to begin this morning by sharing with you one of the most joyful um, and, and feel-good psalms. You know, some of the psalms, especially the ones David wrote, can start off a little bit, I'll use Jackie's word, funky. Um, you know, David wrestles. He wrestles with his true emotions, which is what we need to do. And they usually always end up on a positive note. But this psalm particularly is a really happy, joyful psalm. Um, and it's, it's most likely written uh, after the Israelites came back out of captivity, uh, after their 70 years of captivity uh, in, uh, in Babylon. They were literally let out of jail. In the Passion Translation, it has a title that's called Restored, A Song of the Stairway. And um, this, is, this became one of the songs that the Jewish people would sing as they would come, you know, every year they'd come and celebrate and they'd have their festivals in Jerusalem. And as they would journey towards Jerusalem, they would sing these songs, and they're, they're called they're called songs of ascent as they go up to Jerusalem. But this um, translation typically said it's the song of the stairway, and um, these songs would be sung also by the priests as they would go up the stairs to the temple. Um, and so it's, it's pretty special. There's so much rich meaning just in the title in itself. So Psalm Psalm 126 says this: It was a dream. Come true. When you freed us from our bondage and brought us back to Zion, we laughed and laughed and overflowed with gladness. We were left shouting for joy and singing your praise. All the nations saw it and joined in, saying, The Lord has done great miracles for them. Yes, he did mighty miracles, and we are overjoyed. This is the key bit. Now, Lord, do it again. Restore us to our former glory. May streams of your refreshing flow over us until our dry hearts are drenched again. Those who sow with their tears as seeds will reap a harvest with joyful shouts of glee. They may weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow, but they will return with joyful laughter and shouting with gladness as they bring back armloads of blessing and a harvest overflowing. Isn't that good? That is so good. I don't know about you, but that's, that's one of the best things I've read for a long time. It was a dream, a dream come true. God intervened and returned those who had been in captivity. And that's exactly what the prophet Zephaniah said and spoke about as well. Um, Jack, you already mentioned, I think most of you know that some may not, that um, Arise was actually birthed out of Seacoast Church. Um, and, you know, we are siblings. <laughs> Uh, and um, I don't know how that works. <laughs> but anyway, we are we are one. We are one. And there, you know, there are a number of you here that have, have you know, we're part of Sea Coast and have been part of Sea Coast, but now you're up here with the rise, and we could not be happier about that because we are one church together. Anyway, so having said that, um, there is a connection that you guys have with Sea Coast, and it, it's a prophetic declaration over the church, over Sea Coast Church, particularly, but. It flows also over, over to Arise, uh, and it's, it's relevant to you. And Zephaniah says that the seacoast shall be pastures, 
a shelter for shepherds and fold for flocks. Um, this is not the exact wording, but it says the seacoast is for the house of Judah, which is the house of praise. And by the way, that was awesome praise in worship this morning. Just beautiful. You know, Vanessa and I haven't been in church like this for a long time. Um, we actually asked, I know, no, we're not back to um, but we, we are starting live church again next Sunday. For the last, um, yeah, it's exciting. For the last, uh, since the end of March, um, we have only had two live services. Um, and so, this is really special to be here. Um, I'm trying to remember what I, how to do it. Um, so anyway, so the House of Praise uh, says that God will in intervene and return the captives. So what a great way to lean into God's word by joining with the, this, you know, in this psalm with the celebrations of the overwhelming joy that the people of Israel had as they came out of, out of captivity. And you know, we could, we could really do with some of that joy and laughter and shouting right about now, couldn't we? I don't know about you, but this whole season it has, it has impacted me and Vanessa and, you know, and the people I know um, in, in, in different kind of ways. You know? So we, we, need to do, we need some laughing and some joy. One of the reasons I wanted to bring this psalm to you this morning was because of what it says in verse 4, which is, Now, Lord, do it again. He is doing it again, and we do have reason to celebrate because God is faithful. Over and over, He has proven his faithfulness and love, his incredible love for his people. And throughout history, from one generation to another, you know, we, generations have witnessed God's saving grace and mercy over and over and have testified, you know, of, to the generations coming after them of just how faithful and how trustworthy he is. In Psalm 145, verse 4, it says, One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Uh, we will have a story to tell to the next generation of how we trusted God and remained steadfast all throughout the effects of the pandemic. Uh, and although we, you know, we have been restricted, um, we've been bound by certain government and, and health regulations, we continue to carry a freedom and a joy on the inside throughout it all that nothing can take away. I know it's, it's nothing probably compared to what the Israelites would have been through in captivity. I cannot imagine what that was like. But the stresses and the challenges that we have been experiencing, and we've experienced things emotionally, mentally, relationally, and especially for those who have um, children and family, friends, interstate, um, it's, it's had an effect. Um, and, um, you know, there's that sense of isolation. Not to mention the economic uh, consequences of all. And so this all leads me then to the scripture that, that grabbed my heart as I was thinking and praying about this morning. Actually, that psalm was not the main thing. This is the main thing. It comes from Revelation. And this is one of those moments uh, where the disciple and the apostle John was overwhelmed as he finds himself in the middle of a, a vision of heaven uh, so real that he's there. And, uh, and standing in the midst of this great multitude in heaven. There are elders, and there are heavenly creatures, and, and there, are, there are angels, and they're all lifting up their praise to and worship to God. And there's a sound of many waters, and there's thunderings, and all of that's going on, and there's all this chatter about the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's so exciting. And it all gets a bit much for John. Um, I think it'd be a bit much for me, actually. And he kneels down, and he begins to worship the angel who was revealing it all to him. And this is the scripture in which our message for today is, is um, anchored. Revelation 19.10 And I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Then I've got this underlined. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. For some reason, that just just, just jumped off the page at me, and and I want to I want to tease out a little bit this morning of what that what that might mean. Uh, but firstly, um, I want to share with you something something that was a revelation to me. 
in all of this. Uh, it may not be a revelation for some of you Bible buffs, you know, you, but, but this is something that I discovered for myself um, through all of this. I started off by exploring what the word testimony actually means. And I discovered that way back in the original Hebrew uh, language, right at the very beginnings, the word testimony means to return, to repeat, do it, to do it again. And this is what excites me the most about my whole message this morning. The testimony of Jesus, who he is, what he's done for us, his nature, his character, his promises, we have all of this in the Word of God which comes to life for us by the Holy Spirit. And we carry this witness and this testimony of Jesus on the inside of us. And in this respect, we're able to release the spirit of prophecy as we testify of Jesus. The essence of prophecy is to give a clear and powerful witness of Jesus. It may come through ministering healing, um, to someone, it may come through you know, encouraging and exalting, strengthening someone for the journey ahead. But ultimately, its, it's purpose is to reveal the beautiful and divine character and nature of Jesus to the world. Whenever you share Jesus with someone, whenever I preach about him, whenever you may have the opportunity to preach about him or speak about him, the spirit of prophecy goes forth. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. As, as if that isn't exciting enough, I can see you're all just about can't even remain in your seats right now. As if, you'll get it in a minute. As if that's not enough, I have, um, I've got lots more to say about that, but there's this whole aspect of our testimony that is grounded in the ancient root meaning of the word where it means do it again. When you testify, about Jesus, of course, he's not going to himself, you know, come and do it again. Um, he is coming back, but it'll be a very different scenario then, and that's a whole different message altogether. But here's the thing. Jesus himself in person might be going to do it again, but you and I will release again, prophetically, the same words of wisdom, the same healing power, the same miracles, the same life-changing teaching, Everything that Jesus did, as we testify of him, about him, we will see the spirit of prophecy powerfully released again through our own lives. Woo. Just let that settle in for a bit. In fact, we know that Jesus has said in John 14, 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And Jesus is speaking here of that time, that moment after the crucifixion, after his um, resurrection, and that time he has on earth, just straight up on that. And he's, he's talking about when he ascends into heaven, and then as the disciples were waiting in the upper room, the Holy Spirit was, was to come and be poured out over them. And that's, that's what he's talking about. But the key point today is that as we testify of Jesus as the Son of God, we can expect Him to do it again through us. Amen. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In other words, the do it again message of Jesus. That's what the testimony is. It's the do it again message of Jesus is released prophetically by the Spirit of God through us. That's probably the most exciting thing I've got to share with you this morning. And you can see why I started off with Psalm 126. As the Israelites were rejoicing over their newfound freedom, the miracles, the faithfulness of God, the testimony that they had of what he had done for them, they were also saying, Lord, do it again. Let the streams of refreshing flow freely again. Let the harvest freely come forth again and joyful shouts of, of glee. I love it. It says, bring back arm words of blessing and a harvest overflowing. But there's more. <laughs> if you've been in a place yourself, I'm sure you have, of prayerful, spiritual you know, battle, uh, in confrontation in the spirit, in some 
area of your life, some circumstance that you're praying over, then you'll have no doubt been declaring probably this scripture also from Revelation. Revelation 12, 11. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, by the word of their testimony, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Now, when I read this, I thought, well, I want to ask you, don't you think it's an amazing thing that the word of your testimony is put right alongside the blood of the Lamb? All you seasoned Christians, have a think about that. We know what the blood of the Lamb means. I'm not even going to attempt to unpack that. I feel like it's, so, it's just too sacred to even go there. But look how powerful your testimony is. Your testimony of Jesus is an incredible, powerful tool of spiritual warfare. And it goes right, also right next to the whole bit about laying down your own life. I haven't said that before. I mean, I have. You know, I've got it really nice times, but you get it. And as I speak about these things, I'm, 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 to be honest, I am just about shaking at the knees, not in fear, but in awe, awe of God. Even speaking out these powerful words and, you know, these spiritual principles just about causes me to what happened to John. I just want to get down on worship, you know, just, it's overwhelming. But here's the other thing about your testimony. It's not just about testifying to the nature and character and power of Jesus. It's also the power of your own story, which of course is grounded and rooted in you know, the whole, what Jesus has done for you. Of course, Jesus is the primary part of your testimony. We always put him at the forefront. Your testimony, the witness of how Jesus has changed your life, how he has healed you, how he has transformed you, opened your eyes to the truth, how he's turned your heart of stone into a soft heart of flesh. All these things about your own life also carry the prophetic power of the Holy Spirit. And as you testify to these things about the transformation of your own life, you are basically declaring, Jesus, do it again. Do it again in the person that's standing before me that I'm speaking to, that I'm sharing with. Repeat the work of salvation that you did in me. Do it in them. Men and men, as you share your life and your experience and wisdom with younger men and women, you are prophetically speaking into the spirit realm, do it again, God, in this young person. And you may feel like you don't even know what words to say, but it's the Holy Spirit that does it. It's the spirit of prophecy goes forth and does the work. And as you share, you are prophesying. You're prophesying this miraculous change can happen in their life as well. And when you, when you tell people about the healing um, that he's done in you, whether that's, well, it would be spiritual healing, but, you know, whether it's physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing, you're prophesying, Jesus, do it again, right here, right now, with this person standing in front of me. Does it get you excited? Am I the only one really excited this morning? I'm hoping some of you are on the edge of your seats, because I certainly am. You know, I've been around the Word of God for a long time, and, um, but this excites me as much as anything ever has. And it's as we get the revelation of what we carry that we're then able to release it prophetically. The Holy Spirit does it. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy changes atmospheres. It changes lives. It brings heaven to earth. It breaks open the spirit realm and releases the power of God. You know, and as Jackie was just prophesying over Denise and I and, and the church and uh, saying, you know, that there's going to be growth. I'm thinking, yeah, come on, you know. It's, it's, you receive it. She released it and we receive it. And it's, but it's the spirit of God that's doing it all. Only the Holy Spirit, of course, when we're talking about people, only the Holy Spirit can convict a person's heart. Only the Holy Spirit can bring them to repentance and save them. But 
we make room for him to do all of that through the powerful tools that he has planted within us. And one of those powerful tools is our testimony. Our story. Our own story. It's got, it's, you know, it's got to be shared in love. It's got to be shared in, in truth. Just as we're called to worship God in spirit and in truth. This is part of our worship. It's giving our lives to be used by Him. And, you know, I know we, we can all come under intimidation and we come under the fear of man and all of those things. But no one can refute your own testimony. No one can say to you it's not true and it's not real. And when we get it, when we get just, you know, just how much power, how much prophetic power is released as we open our mouth and share Jesus, it is so much easier. I think we've heard, all probably heard the expression, um, preach the gospel, share the gospel, and, and um, use words if necessary. And it's a really nice saying. Um, it ba it's basically saying that you can show the love of God simply by what you do. And that's true. But is it going to save someone? Have good works ever saved anyone? Remember when Jesus was entering Jerusalem and everyone was declaring and speaking out that Jesus is the Messiah and that he's the King who has come in the name of the Lord and all of that. Their, their, their voices are going forth and their declarations are going forth and they're, they're basically prophesying who Jesus is. And when the Pharisees then said to Jesus, tell your disciples to be silent, he says to them, in Luke 19.40, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. The message of salvation has to be a voice that comes out of somewhere and has comes from someone. Don't underestimate, don't undervalue your personal story. If it, you know, if it has Jesus at the centre, it may be the most powerful thing that another person will hear. And don't simply trust in your own understanding or your own ability to share. You have a helper. You have a powerful helper, and his name is the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1 8, it says, But I promise you this the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be filled with power. And you will be my messengers, that's those who testify of me, to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places of the earth. The day is coming, who knows how far away it is in Australia? There are already signs of this happening. When we will have to, you know, we'll have no choice but to declare publicly our faith in Jesus Christ. Because intolerance and persecution from others will bring us up against all kinds of opposition and we will have to take a stand. <clears throat> uh, Matthew 10, 19 says, So when they arrest you, not if, when, when they arrest you, um, don't worry about how to speak or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will give you at that very moment the words to speak. Good works won't cut it in that moment. I love good works. I love that we can do good works. I'm not, I'm not putting down good works, but I'm going to save anybody. Good works won't make it even in that moment. We need to have faith in God's supernatural power and sovereignty that is expressed in words. You know, many have gone before us in this, and in fact, many around the world, even now, of course, suffer persecution um, and these, day, these situations daily. You know, the choice will be clear. How can you go against your own testimony? How can you go against the testimony of Jesus? There will be really no choice for us. Um, you know, He has delivered people from difficult situations before, and He will do it again. He has done mighty and powerful things through many believers in past generations, and He will do it again. Yeah. Now, what does uh, what does it say in Psalm 126 again? Now, Lord, do it again. Restore to us our former glory. May streams of strength, may streams of refreshing, flow over us until our dry hearts are drenched again. Some of you start to get it. 
restore to us our former glory. I said all that, didn't I? The glory of God, the glory of supernatural power, the glory of salvation. You know, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the glory of the church. I'm talking about God's glory in us. That's right. We are his church. That's right. So Father, help us by your spirit to be ever ready to share the testimony of Jesus Christ because it carries with it the power of prophecy. It's the power to speak life into being. It's the power to speak, you know, to release the anointing, to, to change spiritual atmospheres. Lord, let the word of our testimony be used mightily to overcome the strategies of the enemy to deceive and blind those around us. We mightn't have all the fancy words, but in you we have the words that we need. Our heart cries, Lord, do it again. Do it afresh and new in this generation, just as you've done it in others. We ask these in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
for um, time's sake. And this woman fell at his feet, weeping, broken. The tears were washing his feet and she was wiping them with her hair. She anointed his feet with oil. She wouldn't stop kissing his feet. So obviously she had the revelation of who Jesus was. Meanwhile, the Pharisees looking, thinking, why is Jesus allowing this sinful woman to touch him like that? And uh, it was at that moment that he was weeping at woman at Jesus' feet and he was just right there, sobbing my eyes out. And then Jesus said to, brought to the, he could see what the Pharisee was thinking and, and he brought that comparison of, of the story that there was a creditor and two debtors, and one owed a lot of money. It was like the example he used, he used wages, and the other one was way less. But who would be the most grateful one that had their debt released? And the Pharisee said, well, I guess the one that owed the most money. And then Jesus said, well, you know, this woman, she's washed my feet, dried them with her hair, kissed me. You never even gave me a glass of water when I came in. You never gave me a kiss. Uh, you know, he used that beautiful comparison of the woman's heart of worship compared to his hard heart that just saw her sin and overlooked the love and the grace and the glory of Jesus sitting there. He didn't know who he was joining me, but she did. And then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven you. Go in faith, go in peace, your faith has saved you this day. And the Lord said that to me, and I just had that incredible sense of forgiveness, being forgiven, my guilt and shame just went. I was cleansed, I just felt cleansed and clean, and there's no words, I can't describe it, but it was just beautiful. And when Jim came home, I said, I had an amazing thing happen today. I didn't know I was born again at that moment. I've been in church all my life, but I had never had the revelation of his love and forgiveness, and I couldn't even put it into words, but Jim knew something amazing had happened. Um, and then that weekend, I got to go on a layers walk with Mary Cowan. She'd been praying for someone to go with um, our beautiful pastors or minister, Roy and Mary, had been our spiritual parent, mother and father, for a, a few years just before that. And, um, and so I went. I got to go to Amaze, which put, the, put everything together for me and had a, more healing. Uh, and Jean got to go six weeks later at a men's camp in Sydney. And God was just so good. He's so faithful how he just puts it all together for us. And, and we only have to give him that much. And he comes in like a flood, right there. Time, perfect timing. So thank you for listening. I pray that blesses you or speaks to someone's heart really personally this morning. Thank you. For, thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, oh, story. It's two weeks running. Honestly, this is ridiculous. Um, I just wonder if there are people here this morning. Uh, one of the things Benny said was she'd been in church, she'd gone along on a Sunday, she'd worshipped God, and there was just that one little extra step. And so I wonder if there is anyone here this morning, if you, if you are just not sure, if you are just not 100% sure that it's all good, can I encourage you, don't leave this place this morning without making sure. Come and see Benice. Come see one of us. We would love to pray for you and with you. Jim, that was a great word. Thank you. We're on a journey um, of discipleship at the moment. We had three great men share last week just their story. And um, I just think in the times that we're living in, you know, I guess what I heard you say is there's a massively spiritual component to the season that's, that's before us and that we need to be aware of that that there is an enemy and that he is shutting doors and, you know, putting blockages, I guess, in our pathway. But we have a story and it's a redemptive story. It's a powerful story and we need to be bold to share that story. So thank you. Thank you. Fantastic work.
Let me just pray and um, Daniel and the team come up and you know, could you play that song with Father's Arms? I just I just wonder if we just can linger for a moment and I just wonder whether God's God wants to just do something with us this morning. So let's just let's just enter in, let's not clock off, let's not think of barbecue chicken for lunch, but let's just let's just run into our father's arms today.